happened really well. I just had to get uh, Russ Orchard to make sure we didn't have some technical difficulties going on there. I thought we may have. So um, anyway, I'm excited to be with you today. Got some stuff that I'm excited to share with you. Um, the topic that I want to talk about today is basically the idea of looking at our current market condition and what's happening. And I thought to myself, you know, if I was selling real estate full time right now, what would be maybe the top five things I would try to be focusing on? And as I started to think about that, I started thinking about our uh, morning ascent and the affirmations that we are, uh, we are declaring every single day from our morning ascent. And many of you have been a part of that. If you haven't, please join at 8 a.m. And, and enjoy some of that. But when you think about uh, those, those affirmations, I basically took the five things and I looked at our affirmations and they're totally part of that. And um, thought I just to say kind of the top few affirmations and how they're applicable to what I would be spending my time doing each and every day right now. So uh, first two affirmations, some of them are combined into one just because they're so um, so applicable or they were close to each other, whatever it might be. But uh, basically the first two that I want to share with you, if you have a pen and a paper, write these down. They are number one, I think prosperous thoughts. I think prosperous thoughts. That's one A. One B is real estate transactions are abundant in any market. So if you back up and just think, hey, I think prosperous thoughts, one of the greatest and most prosperous thoughts you can have right now is the idea and reality that real estate transactions are abundant in any market. And agents, look, I know this because I've lived it. I cut my teeth back in 2007, 2008 when the market was tough. And it was sort of the opposite of what we might be experiencing right now. I see some people on the call who probably experienced it. I mean, it was like, I remember going into appointments saying, yeah, if we price your home right, we should probably be able to get this sold in the next three to four months. I mean, crazy. That was a dumb thing for me to say anyway, for the record. But bottom line is, is still just nuts that that was the market we were in. Because if you wanted to go show someone homes, my goodness, you could plan them out three or four days in advance, a week in advance, and have uh, 10, 12, 20 homes that you could show. And I know some of you who are on this call lived through that. And the bottom line was, we succeeded, even in that tough market. Uh, the demand was not as high. The, great, the rates weren't as low. The inventory was too much. And so trying to get a, uh, a, a listing was not as exciting as it might be right now. So again, guys, every day, right now, a couple of the focuses that you could have straight from our affirmations are number one, A, I think prosperous thoughts. Be positive, focus on abundance, focus on the attitude that you can accomplish things. And also, if you have a pen and a paper with you, this is a question I'd be writing down. Does what I do every day earn money? Something like that. Are my activities every day money-making activities? You see, if you were participated in some of what I've talked about, the idea of Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, if you participated in any of those classes I did, you'll recall that when people start thinking about and fearing poverty, doesn't have to be sleeping on the side of the road. It can just be, I fear that I'm not going to be able to earn as much money as I once did. I mean, we're facing that in droves right now. And uh, the, the thing that happens is it causes us to become what? Well, it causes us to become uh, things are irrelevant to us. We're going to procrastinate what we need to do. We're indifferent towards success. All of those things. We need to back away from that right now and start thinking prosperous thoughts and these prosperous thoughts, and number one, in my opinion right now, is to know real estate transactions are abundant in any market. And, and so for those of you who are just joining, I had kind of these five things that I wanted to share today, which are the five things I'd be focusing my attention on. And then, of course, I just look through our affirmations and see there are some great affirmations that go along nicely with those. So 1A, 1B, I think prosperous thoughts and real estate transactions are abundant in any market. And guys, you, you, I don't have to spend a ton of time on this because most of you were at our award show last week watching and some of you were earning awards, many of you were. You know real estate transactions are abundant in this market. 
And if you don't know it because you earned something, you know it because you saw somebody earning something. It's ready for the taking. Go make it happen. Okay, number two, pull this up. So second thing that I would be focusing on right now, and the affirmation is my SOI expects me to be their real estate expert. My sphere of influence expects me to be their real estate expert. What does that mean to you? Well, my goodness, your people are counting on you, your friends, your families, your associates, your acquaintances, whoever it might be, they're counting on you to be their real estate expert. And what should that look like? So the, the next step for me in what I would be spending my time doing if I were a full-time agent right now is I would be making sure I had a game plan in place for how I was communicating with and working with my sphere of influence. Ask yourself that question right now. What is my game plan or strategy with my sphere of influence? I'll never forget years ago, standing in front of a group of, oh boy, 40, 50 agents and asking the question to them, who in this room works their sphere of influence? Now, the reason why I even asked this question was we had a commission report. This is a company I previously owned. We had a commission report that would tell us how many transactions, uh, or, or excuse me, what the source of the lead was for each transaction. And what I found was, is that, you know, we were really heavily into the buyer leads, and web leads and stuff that, golf 70, 80% of them were probably 70% were that. The rest were SOI transactions. But here's what I knew. Everybody was focusing on either investments or the, the web lead stuff. Almost nobody was working their SOI that I was aware of. So that's why I asked the question, who is doing this? And it turned out that everyone in the room raised their hand and said, oh, I'm working my SOI. And when I said, who's creating transactions outside of being asked, hey, are you still in real estate? Right, because that's how we sometimes work our SOI. We get asked by them rather than a game plan and how we do it. Look, have you ever been asked that question? Hey, are you still in real estate? Boy, you love to hear that because you know that the next thing is probably going to mean possibly some business for you. But we also hate to hear it because you know that we didn't connect with those people the way we needed to, right? So important. So let's keep down that path, guys. So uh, my SOI expects me to be their real estate expert. So who's in your SOI? Have you defined that? What CRM are you using to keep track of them? What type of follow-up are you doing? What type of um, um, client events are you putting on? Yes, even through COVID, right? What type of activities are you engaging with? Are you participating in the company ones? I'm not sure what California does for sure, but I know here in Utah, we've got the pumpkin patch event. We've got um, the Easter egg hunt that we've done in years past, probably not this year, but um, kind of interesting when you stop and take a look at those activities. Allow yourself to be a hero, but then also pause for a moment. Just remember, it's not just about you. It's not just about you earning business from them. There's another great element that's so critical in all of this, which is how can you help them? They're counting on you, gang. They need you to be their real estate expert so that they don't get stuck uh, with a brokerage that doesn't have their best interests at heart. So they don't get stuck uh, accepting an offer that they shouldn't be uh, accepting in this market and missing out, right? Be thinking about how critical it is for a moment for your people to work with you. And at very minimum, go out there and create for yourself a, uh, an opportunity to just inform them, just to make sure they know, hey, I'm in real estate. This is what I'm doing. Let me know if you have any questions about buying, selling, or investing. That's all you need to do. So, all right, guys, that's number two that I would be focused on right now. Number one was being very positive, optimistic. Real estate transactions are abundant in any market. And then, of course, number two, my SOI expects me to be their real estate expert. Uh, number three, I'm going to use three of the affirmations because they're right in a row. Are you ready? Number one, prospecting is good for my business. This is 3A. 3B, I call expireds and for sale by owners. 
And three C, prospecting is easy for me. So think about that for just a moment. These three essential items are absolutely imperative to the success that you're having right now. You have to be committed to the idea that you're going to connect with more people. I had a great visit with some of our wonderful St. George agents the other day, and it was remarkable when you start to look at just the numbers for a moment and say, hmm, if I call five people per day, and if I were to do that five days a week and do that for 42 weeks a year, which would be two months off, look, and nobody's really going to do that, but just for fun's sake, that's over a thousand new contacts you would make. And if you were to ask yourself, well, how many contacts should I be able to convert? Well, look, the reality is you might think, oh, it's one to 3%, it's 5%, whatever it might be. Some people like to say it's 10%. If it was 10%, that would be uh, 100 uh, new transactions by calling 1,000 people. I wish it were that easy. Um, but who knows, depending on your skill level, right? But bottom line, the point that I'm getting to is I know that you can make it happen from one to two to 3%. And if you are at one, if you talk to just five people per day, that should result in an additional 10 transactions. And obviously, all of this is contingent upon improving your sales skills, abilities on the phone. It's contingent upon consistency. It's contingent upon um, who you're calling and what leads you're calling. And that's why I go into the I call expireds and for sale by owners, right? Who are you calling? Do you know exactly who you're reaching out to right now? What are the names of the people? Do you know each day who you're going to be calling? What's the lead source you're focusing on? If I were selling real estate full-time, I would choose a lead source, two or three lead sources, and I would be so committed that I would not look left, I would not look right for at least 90 days and give my full attention to these lead sources and just demand of myself, I am going to become the expert at these lead sources. I don't care if it's FISBOs, expired, SOI, just listed, just sold, networking, notice of default, um, door knocking, web leads, whatever you want to do is absolutely irrelevant. I really believe that. I have opinions about which ones I would focus on, and I'm happy to share those with you. But I'm telling you right now, if you just get serious about being committed to something and any one of these lead sources, your business ship will, your business, I was going to say business will take off like a rocket ship. Your business will take off like a rocket ship. We should start calling it the business ship. All right. So um, guys, make sure that you're being committed to those three affirmations. Once again, prospecting is good for my business. Let's analyze that for just a second. Look, we say so often that like our business is alive. And what is it that feeds? Well, it says later in an affirmation, prospecting feeds my business. You know that your business is either alive and getting healthier, or maybe it's alive but dying. That's the reality of it. We know we're going to see some ebbs and flows. That's kind of natural but it's also very possible to have a great deal of consistency in your business. So I challenge you to consider the fact that prospecting is good for your business. And that means consistency, talking to new people every single day. Um, one of the uh, daily messages you'll be hearing coming out for me soon. Um, I think I talked about this a little bit last week, actually, I can't remember in a training or something. Um, Maybe it was morning ascent, actually, but um, this great message from John C. Maxwell, and then there was an article from Success Magazine. But the lady that wrote the article in Success Magazine said, avoid using that insidious word later. That insidious word later. She called the word later, like, I'll do it later. I'll get to that later. She said, that is the dream killer. Take action right now. Figure out that thing that you want and go get it. And that's why I think identifying in our world of real estate that prospecting is good for your business is essential. And then, of course, I, I, the affirmation states, I call for sale by owners and expireds, which I would do right now if I were you. That's one of the areas I would strongly consider. I know what's going through your mind right now. People on this call said, 
there's no more expireds a and b um for sale by owners or have it have it too easy right now do you believe you create value do you believe having a real estate agent in a transaction creates value if you do then you've got the perfect way to go and communicate with a for sale by owner and help them know how they're going to be uh, having some money saved. I promise you, it's all about making the connections. And then of course, third, prospecting is easy for me. Prospecting gets really, really easy when, and I'm going to move on to number uh, four right now. Uh, when uh, number four, my presentation is powerful and persuasive. When your presentation is powerful and persuasive, guess what? Your prospecting becomes much easier. And the reality is, is that once you know what to say, how to say it, the tone, the clothes, and all of those good things, uh, you're bound to see greater success in this real estate world that you're working in. So think about maybe some of the best presentations you've had and think about perhaps some of maybe the worst presentations that you've had. I've got some in my mind right now. And when I think about, well, what made the difference? I can tell you uh, a couple of the reasons. Uh, number one, being ill-prepared. The difference between, between being uh, not being prepared and being well-prepared for a presentation is all the difference in the world. It's very hard to be powerful and persuasive in a presentation when you're not quite sure what you're going to say. It's very hard to be powerful and persuasive in a presentation when you're a little uncertain about the market analysis that you never got to, or you're a little uncertain about what their needs, their wants, their desires are, right? Part of the pre great presentation is ensuring that you've pre-qualified them. That's part of the aspect of creating a powerful uh, and persuasive presentation. So please, agents, as you consider what you're presenting on, the people you're presenting to, dial in that presentation just a bit better. There are books out there all about how to present more effectively. Read them, know them. Um, we just read one, The Stand Like Lincoln, Speak Like Churchill. Awesome book on pre present, uh, presenting to people, and it's phenomenal. So think about that. Look at your own presentations right now. And if you feel like, yeah, I mean, some people, and it's okay if you do, if you feel like my presentation is totally dialed in, wonderful. My guess is you've worked really hard at accomplishing that. For anybody that may be feeling a little bit like my presentation could use some work, may I suggest picking a book to read about how to present, having some scripts in place that you know are the scripts that you're committed to. If you read something that you don't absolutely love, Try to understand why that might be in the script and try to get committed to using it because a lot of people are seeing success from it. If you just can't buy into it, figure out another way, but just create a script that works for you. And the best news is, is that as prospecting becomes easier and you have more opportunity to present, uh, you're bound to see some great things happen that way. So um, again, my presentation, is powerful and persuasive. So important that you have that dialed in. And uh, again, focus on those scripts. And then a couple other points that I would add is, um, are you recording yourself audio? Are you recording yourself visually? Uh, I'm telling you, it's crazy. Even when you think you've got energy and enthusiasm. I uh, do these morning messages, as you guys know. And I will record myself. And then sometimes I'll go back and listen, and I am just shocked that when I thought I was bringing energy, when I thought I was having enthusiasm, I sound so dull, so monotone. And so just look, you got to stay with it. Be standing up when you're practicing. When you are practicing these scripts, have all the energy, the most like crazy energy and enthusiasm you can bring so that when you're sitting down at a table, that you can muster up even more energy, more enthusiasm, because that's what you're used to practicing. Okay, um, let me see how we're doing on time here. Great. Uh, next, um, let's talk about the fifth one that I thought, again, things that I would be focusing on right now, fifth and final, 
if I were selling real estate full time. So as a recap, number one was real estate transactions are abundant in uh, any market. And I think prosperous thoughts. Two, my SOI expects me to be their real estate expert. Three, prospecting is good for my business. I call for sell by owners and expireds and prospecting is good for me. Four, my presentation is powerful and persuasive. And five, fifth thing I would be focusing on like crazy right now if I was selling real estate full time, I am disciplined and accountable to my daily schedule. Do you have a schedule right now? If you were the CEO of your own business, which you are, and if you had a board of directors, right, which you don't, you do have people counting on you. But if you had a board of directors and they said, hey, why don't you slide your phone across the table really quickly? Let's see what your schedule has looked like for the past month. Would you be excited about doing that? Or would you take your phone and start smashing it on the corner of the desk so nobody can see what your schedule has looked like over the course of the last month? Look, uh, it reminds me a little bit of when Tom Brady, who I'm a fan of, was asked to turn his uh, cell phone in over the uh, deflate gate and somehow his phone got ruined not long after. Um, guys, it is so important that you, that you get yourselves committed to a schedule of some, time, some kind. We've got trainings all over. We talk about it all the time. But just if I take a look at number one of I'm thinking prosperous thoughts, real estate transactions are abundant. It's so tied into the idea that you have a schedule and that you are disciplined and accountable to it. So today, my thought would just be this, engage yourself in money-making activities. I talked about the think and grow rich thing and the idea of the fear of poverty. Um, one of the elements of that that I think is so important to remember is that you are focused right now. Some people get so focused on the idea of saving dollars. Where can I save money? How can I save $100 here? Where can I save this? Where can, and look, I commend everyone for trying to be economically sound. Um, but let me just say that I am so certain that the time and energy and effort that you are spending into finding ways to save those little bits of, do of dollars, uh, you... <laughs> You would earn that tenfold by just talking to more people, engaging more in your business. Um, trying to decide if I want to tell this story. I, basically, over the years, you know, look, when people decide they're going to maybe perhaps go to a different brokerage or they're thinking about it or whatever, they'll come and I have a chance to visit with them. And um, Churchill book is Stand Like Lincoln, Speak Like Churchill. Might be the opposite. Speak Like Churchill, Stand Like Lincoln. Someone asked that on the uh, thread. Um, somebody gave me not too long ago, this detailed, uh, Microsoft Excel spreadsheet showing me, these are the companies I'm considering. And here's where the savings are guys, this agent, uh, I promise you could have made up for any of the savings that they were looking for by not creating a spreadsheet because that spreadsheet had to have taken six or eight hours to create and dwell on and think about, and it's consuming their life right now. When the reality is, is start thinking prosperous thoughts, start engaging in money-making activities, start being um, committed to and engaged and accountable to your daily schedule. I will never forget having an agent come to me one day and say, my wife and I have talked, he was working on my team at the time as a, as a buyer agent said, We've decided this is no longer a good fit. It just feels like, uh, you know, I'm hitting my head against the wall every week, not seeing the success we want. And so my wife, you know, she'd really like to see me do something else. Here's what was awesome. I said, well, does your wife know that you have 400 people in your follow-up list right now that you have not spoken to? And the room got very quiet for a second. And he said, no, she does not know that. I said, how do you think she would feel when you've come home at 1 or 2 p.m. every day saying your work day was done? And, oh, we can't go on that vacation because we don't have money. And, oh, sorry, we're not going to the zoo because that's expensive. And, oh, can't drive that car, right? How do you think she might feel right now 
if she saw your task list, do you think she'd be excited about it? Do you think she'd have the same feeling that she has right now, which is for some reason, this real estate gig, she's just not working out. Agents, this guy had a total wake up at that moment. Uh, and he ended up staying on the team, getting caught up on his task list and had a, the best year he's had in his real estate career that year because he got serious about it. I'm telling you right now, get disciplined and accountable to your schedule, a good money-making schedule, right? The activities that you're engaged in. Again, the thinking prosperous, thinking of Napoleon Hill and uh, the ideas that he might have is right now you might say, ooh, I got to cut back. I'm not going to use a transaction coordinator and I'm not going to. Guys, I would argue now is the best time for you to start engaging a transaction coordinator in your business technologies and all of those things so that you can continue to engage in the activities that will earn you money, which you know are talking to more people, finding a way to speak with more people. I am absolutely certain agents that if you are to put these thoughts and these efforts into your business every day, this year, no matter how your start has been to the year, can be the best year of your real estate career. And those five things essentially are being mentally strong, having prosperous thoughts. Second, working your sphere of influence, being their expert, having a plan in place to communicate or just inform them you're available to assist them. Three, prospecting, talking to new people, engaging with others and ensuring that uh, you're, you are feeding your business each day. Four, getting yourself more effective in your presentations, making sure your presentations are powerful and persuasive. You know what to say, how to say it, what questions to ask, how to ask the questions, what objections you're going to have and how to overcome those. Be prepared for your presentation and great things will happen. And then all of this is nothing without a great schedule, a schedule that you can remain disciplined to and held accountable to. If you will engage agents in these five activities and these five things I've talked to, again, I, I, I know for a fact you can make this the best year of your real estate career. So thanks a ton for participating in our coaching call today. It is awesome to see you guys. And I hope that you go out today and make the rest of the day uh, phenomenal. Thanks a ton for being here.